Chapter 20 of Just for Juniors Little Talks to Little Folks by Rev. Gerald T. Brennan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. Chapter 20 The Silver Cobwebs. It was the Sunday before Christmas. Mr. and Mrs. Cleary knew that Santa Claus would be very busy on Christmas Eve, and they decided to help him. They decided to trim their Christmas tree so that Santa would have nothing to do except to leave the presents. They trimmed the tree with popcorn, candy canes, animal crackers, little bells, stars, and angels. Then they placed the tree in a corner of the library and locked the door so that the children could not see it before it was time. Mr. and Mrs. Cleary thought that they were the only ones who had seen the tree. But they were wrong. Patches, the dog, saw the tree with her great black eyes. The little gray kitty saw the tree with her little blue eyes. The yellow canary saw it, too, with his wise, bright eyes. Even a little mouse peeked at the tree when the kitty was not around. But there were some others in the house who hadn't seen the beautiful Christmas tree. They were the little gray spiders. You see, spiders live in corners, the warm corners of sunny attics and the dark corners of cellars. Of course, the spiders expected to see the Christmas tree, too. But, just before Christmas, Mrs. Cleary began to clean the house. She swept, dusted, and scrubbed, because she wanted everything to be grand and clean for the Christ child's birthday. Her broom went into all the corners, and, of course, the spiders had to run and hide, so the spiders couldn't see the Christmas tree. Spiders like to know all about everything, and spiders like to see everything. So, they were very sad. They wanted to see that Christmas tree. They waited in the attic and waited in the cellar, waited for the time when they could leave their hiding places and see the tree. Well, the day before Christmas, Mrs. Cleary was busy in the kitchen baking mince pies and Christmas cookies. So what do you think the spiders did? They crept down the attic stairs and up the cellar stairs. They crept along the halls, then under the library door and into the beautiful room. There were fat mother spiders, and old papa spiders, and little curly spiders, the baby ones. And they all looked at the Christmas tree. Around and around the tree they crawled, and they looked and looked and looked. Why, the spiders ran all over the tree and looked at every single thing. Up and down, in and out, the spiders ran over every branch, and they saw everything right up close. You may be sure that the spiders stayed until they had seen all there was to be seen. Then they went away, quite happy. The spiders had seen the Christmas tree. Now, some people say that in the still, dark night before Christmas, the Christ child visits every home. But when the Christ child looked at the Cleary tree, what do you suppose? The tree was covered with webs. Everywhere the spiders had been, they had left a spider web. And you know they had been just everywhere. So the tree was covered from bottom to top with spider webs, all hanging from the branches. Of course, the Christ child knew that mothers don't like spider webs. It would never, never do to have a Christmas tree covered with webs. So the Christ child touched the spider's webs and turned them all to silver. And the silver spider webs shone and shone all over the beautiful Christmas tree. Now you know why Christmas trees have silver webs. Now, I don't know whether this story is true or not, but it could be true. The Christ child is God and can do anything. He does even greater things than change cobwebs into silver. Why, every day he goes around looking, not at Christmas trees, but at souls dark and black with the cobwebs of sin. And Christ changes those souls and makes them beautiful with his grace. Yes, children, Christ does all this when you go to confession. Before confession, your soul is covered with the cobwebs of sin. When there are sins on your soul, your soul is not beautiful. It is ugly. But confession changes all that. When you go to confession, you tell God that you are sorry for your sins, and you promise God that you will not sin again. Then what happens? God touches your soul and cleans the sins from it and fills your soul with grace. After confession, the sins are gone. Your soul is beautiful and it shines with God's grace. 
No one likes cobwebs. No boy or girl can be happy with a soul covered with the cobwebs of sin. That's why you should go to confession often. It is the only way by which you can get back into God's grace. So if you ever fall into sin, hurry to confession. Saturday, in most homes, is the day when Mother cleans house. It's the day when Mother cleans away the cobwebs. Well, Saturday is confession day, too, the day when you should have your soul cleaned by God. You know, I think that Jesus likes Saturday. Why? Because every Saturday, Jesus sees so many boys and girls going to confession. Jesus likes to see children with clean souls. So when your soul gets dirty, clean away the cobwebs of sin by going to confession. End of chapter 20